let's talk about how we build things in space. Because if we are going to become a truly spacefaring civilization and a multi-planetary species, then we need to expand our manufacturing infrastructure beyond the surface of the Earth. Take Mars, for example. If we're going to build a Mars colony, or eventually something on the scale of Elon Musk's Mars City, we can't just ship that all over from the Earth. We've got to build it on Mars. And traditional manufacturing doesn't really translate so well to an autonomous habitat factory millions of miles away on an alien planet. It also doesn't work very well for manufacturing on the moon or trying to build in Earth orbit either. 3D printing is the way to build things in the space age. No other process is more adaptable to new and unpredictable situations than 3D printing or additive manufacturing. And today, we're getting into the reasons why that is and what we will use this technology to build as we expand humanity into outer space. This is The Space Race. The most compelling reason that 3D printing is so vital to the space age is that it unlocks the ability to rapidly iterate on any design completely on the fly. What we mean by that is you can change the design of your 3D printed objects as many times as you want, as often as you want, without having to physically modify your printing machine. This isn't the case with traditional manufacturing. You've probably heard the term retooling, and this refers to any time that a company changes the design of their product. The machines at the factory have to be retooled, which means the tools must be physically changed to accommodate the new product change. But over in the world of 3D printing, if you want to change your design, you simply change the software code that is controlling your printer while the printer itself doesn't need to be modified at all. You're probably familiar with these standard consumer grade 3D printers that you can get on Amazon for a few hundred bucks. Even the most basic machines can create a plastic model of a Ninja Turtle or a Baby Yoda or whatever the kids are into right now, I don't know. But you can also get the same kind of cheap plastic toy at a dollar store. And that's going to come from a factory where they use injection molding. This allows them to rapidly mass produce a giant quantity of a particular product very quickly. But every time the trend changes, they want to make a new kind of toy, they need to make a new mold. While back at home, you can make a new style of toy every time you print. And all that needs to change in between is the software code that controls the 3D printer. What people might not realize is that this same technology can be scaled up to the degree where we are literally 3D printing spaceships. This idea is being pioneered right now by a company called Relativity Space, who have a fully 3D printed rocket called the Terran-1. The idea behind Relativity Space is to bring Silicon Valley innovation to the slow-moving dinosaur that is the aerospace industry. By 3D printing their rockets, Relativity claims that they use 100 times fewer individual parts than a traditional rocket while achieving 10 times faster production speed. And that's great, but their primary advantage with this process is really the flexibility that comes from having no fixed tooling, a simplified supply chain, and the ability to optimize their product through compounding iteration. And what we mean by iteration is that every time they build something, they can check for defects and test it for function, and then make adjustments to their code based on those findings and try again. And then they compound those improvements. Every time they build and test and iterate, the product gets better and closer to perfection. Relativity used a process of sensor and analytics driven machine learning during the manufacturing process. So the machine can actually identify defects in the product as it is being produced and instantly compensate in real time. To accomplish this, Relativity uses a machine that they call the Stargate. It is the world's largest metal 3D printer. Using a custom designed aluminum alloy to form the body of the rocket, and even the rocket engines as well. 
Time Magazine named the Stargate one of the best inventions of 2021, thanks to Relativity's use of autonomous robotics and artificial intelligence. The Terran 1 rocket is set to launch for the first time this summer, so we'll have to wait and see how well this plays out in real life, but this is more about the fundamentals and what they mean for the future of space manufacturing, and that all seems to be pretty solid. If you have a hard time focusing on daily tasks such as studying, working, or falling asleep, then today's sponsor Endel is made just for you. I've already been using Endel for over a year, so I'm very excited to share them with you today. I've had trouble falling asleep for a long time. It was common for me to try falling asleep for over an hour, but luckily I found out about Endel, which uses science-backed soundscapes to soothe you into a deep sleep at night. I couldn't imagine trying to fall asleep without Endel now. It helps me fall asleep quickly so I can sleep longer each day. The number of health benefits related to sleep is enormous, so this has made a big impact on my life. And they also have a relax mode and a focus mode. The focus mode helps boost your productivity by helping you concentrate for longer periods of time. I seriously cannot recommend Endel more. It's a fantastic app backed by neuroscience and brainwave studies. And right now, the first 100 people to download Endel by clicking on the custom link in the description will get a free week of audio experiences. So download Endel now. Those free experiences are going to go quickly. And now let's get back to the video. So how does this apply to our original point about building a Mars colony? There are going to be two major advantages. One is in the shipping or transport of material from Earth to Mars. We have constraints on the weight and volume of stuff that we can fit into a rocket, even a gigantic rocket like the SpaceX Starship. And we want to make the absolute most that we can out of every trip, because we're talking about a six to eight month long journey just to arrive. And even if the Starship is able to make it back to Earth at some point, we won't be seeing it again for at least a couple of years. So let's say we want to ship prefabricated habitation modules to Mars, something like what Matt Damon was living in. That's going to be a big hollow object. And maybe it partially collapses for transport or something, but there are still going to be empty voids. And anyone who ships things for a living would tell you that the last thing you want to do is ship air. For example, say you make giant soup pots. That's your product, like big Italian grandma soup pots. You put one pot in a box and you ship those boxes out to customers. How many of those can you fit into a delivery truck? Not very many. Are you getting the most out of that truck's capability for transporting mass? Not at all. But what if you were to be selling cast iron pans? They're significantly more dense, take up less volume, and you can fit significantly more pans into the same truck. You'd probably hit the weight limit of the truck before you filled it to the brim with cast iron. Same deal with a rocket ship. If we ship one giant 3D printing machine along with the tightly wound spools of printing material, then we are maximizing density and using the full lift capability of your super heavy rocket. Then by using the same space occupied by one prefabricated habitation module, maybe we can send the raw materials to build three or four. Our second big advantage with 3D printing comes back to the word iteration. Let's say we design and build what we think is the perfect Mars habitation module. We ship it to Mars, unload it, set it up, and it doesn't work the way that we thought it would work. Just for an example, let's say that we go to pressurize the habitat and it just explodes for whatever reason. I don't know why, but boom, it exploded. Now what? Well, we'd have to try again here on Earth, build another one with a new iteration, and then ship that to Mars and hope that it doesn't also explode. But if we're using advanced AI-driven machine learning 3D printing processes, like the Stargate and Relativity Space, then we can just analyze what went wrong, pivot on the fly, and instantly try again. And we don't even necessarily need to 3D print a Mars colony or a moon base using metal like they do with the rocket. We could probably use a lighter weight plastic material, or there are even ideas to use regolith as a printable building material. 
So the surface layer of dust and rock on the moon and Mars is called regolith. We know what regolith on the moon is composed of from sample return missions, and we have a pretty good idea what makes up the surface of Mars. We will know for sure in a few years when the first samples being collected right now are returned to the Earth, but we're pretty sure that we can actually transform the dust and rock on Mars into a kind of pliable concrete by combining it with a biopolymer. This could come from a plant-based plastic that could be grown and produced on Mars. Or there has even been some talk of using human bodily fluids and urine to create the necessary product. Which sounds wacky. Again, I don't know. This is what the very smart people are saying, that we need a biological additive to make the concrete material harden. So we've just got to trust them on that one. Anyway, the point being that with this additive manufacturing technology established on a place like Mars or the moon, we don't have all of the answers on day one. We get the luxury of being able to iterate through trial and error in the real world situation. And obviously we don't want to be making errors while there are human beings up there. So we get the added bonus of an automated process. We don't need to retool, we just push a new software update to the machine. And this is all so simplified that just a few automated robots that we deploy to Mars, maybe a handful of those Tesla bot androids that Elon Musk is working on, we can build and test and establish an entire colony before any long-term human residents of Mars begin to arrive. And Simplifying the manufacturing process like this opens up so many opportunities for what we can deploy in space. Imagine a 3D printing machine in orbit around the Earth, and all of the things that we could build up there without having to worry about gravity, or without being limited by what we can fit inside a rocket's cargo fairing. You probably know about the James Webb Space Telescope and how it had to be folded up so tightly to fit inside the rocket and then how it had to unfold itself out again in deep space. We probably can't 3D print a giant telescope like that, but we definitely can print much less complex, but equally gigantic or even more gigantic things in space. For instance, a space station that's just constantly printing new modules and components and expanding and iterating and improving. Or, 3D printing an entire interstellar spaceship that could set off from orbit on its way to the far reaches of Jupiter or Saturn. The possibilities here are basically endless, and that's what makes this one of the most fun technologies to think about. So let us know what you can dream up to 3D print in outer space. A ship, a colony, an orbital station? Drop your ideas down below. Meet us back here every week for more updates on everything aerospace industry and interstellar exploration related. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That really helps us out for real. And subscribe to the Space Race for more videos just like this. We do one long form essay and one news update every week. And if you'd like more, we've got two more on the screen for you right now.